A night full of winter storm with streets closed as well as schools and many other activities. Complete reports on that and on the end of a career in politics for a Cleveland councilwoman. We check on how some Clevelanders who did not make it home tonight are spending this evening, and we look in on the confirmation hearings for one of Jimmy Carter's cabinet members. So stay with us. TV5 Eyewitness News is next. $100,000 mystery tune tomorrow at 730. Five Eyewitness News with Dave Patterson, Ted Henry, and the Eyewitness News team is brought to you by Ohio Edison and the Illuminating Company. Good evening, this is the news. As I came back in from supper tonight, I was one of the very few drivers on the road. In fact, conditions were so bad that all of the westbound traffic on the shoreway was outlawed altogether. The wind and the spray from the lake made the lanes just too dangerous to use, but that was just one of the major roadways. It was much the same on the interstates and on your street, too, if I had to guess. And if you thought it was bad today, don't be surprised to see it just as bad tomorrow. Our Mark Koontz got the word tonight from Lynn Maximuk of the National Weather Service. This is the first real winter storm that we've had. The rest of the storms have been coming down out of the northwest, but this one got some good upper air support and came out of the southwest, and it's a good winter storm. I think if there was ever a day when we could classify this as a blizzard, this would be about as close to it as I've seen in many a year here in Cleveland. Right. This is a near blizzard conditions. Occasionally, we do get into blizzard conditions. To be a fully qualified blizzard by definition, you have to have winds of over 35 miles an hour and visibility is below a quarter mile. And we have reached both of those criteria here today, off and on throughout the greater Cleveland area. Looks likely that will continue again tonight and through the morning hours. Yes, it looks like this storm is beginning to stall up just north of Ohio and will last in here at least through the night and into tomorrow. Uh, we expect near blizzard conditions through the morning tomorrow, and tomorrow morning's rush hour with the cold temperatures and the new snowfall is probably going to be worse than it is today. I'm getting cold just watching the report. <laughs> I don't want to go home tonight. <laughs> you know, when you get a whole lot of snow and ice on a utility pole, it can cause a short circuit and a fire. That very thing occurred quite a few times around town today, and power was knocked out in many neighborhoods. CEI and Muni Light tell us now power is restored at this hour. The blackout crippled the last leg of the rapid transit line out to the airport, but service was restored by 5.30. Travelers at Hopkins Airport were pretty much in the dark this afternoon. The power outage made the airport dim, cold, and lonely, snarling many flights until late afternoon. United Airlines, the largest carrier, was closed down until 9 o'clock. However, everything at Hopkins looks okay for tomorrow morning. And earlier in the day, bad weather made travel miserable for people using the Akron-Canton Airport. There, both United and Allegheny had to halt flights until the blizzard-like weather calmed down. They are resuming flights for tomorrow. When I came to work this afternoon, I could only see about 10 feet in front of my car at one point. It seemed the more I got downtown, the worse the weather became. The weather was so bad that it, uh, some people decided to stay downtown. We've taken one of our live TV5 action cams to visit to the Bond Court Hotel right now, where we're meeting with uh, Mrs. Joe Sanson. She's the assistant manager over there. And Joe, can you tell me how many extra people are rooming at the Bond Court tonight because of the bad weather? Well, we have approximately 80 people. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a final count, however, because there are, I would say, quite a few more who have called us and will be a little late. Joe, do you have any special rates for people when the weather becomes so inclement and they may be short of cash or something? Do you have a special program for these people? Oh, yes. Uh, it's a special rate, and uh, we call it Operation Snowflake. Uh, we are charging $20 for a single and $25 for a double, uh, which is considerably less than our regular rates. Um, we have many downtown people here and it's very convenient for them especially when you consider it's a warm bed away from the cold weather by the way do you have many people staying with your hotel tonight who uh, may have been stranded out of the airport who couldn't get out of Cleveland oh yes yes quite a few um, I, I we didn't really know how bad it was until they all start doubling back matter of fact some people had checked out earlier and uh, decided to come back. Okay, Joe. Well, thank you for being with us. You're I hope the weather welcome. clears up for all of them and for all of us as well. Joe Sanson, she's the assistant general manager over at the Bond Court Hotel. One of the great blunders of the day came at 7.22 this morning when the United Press International wires carried the report that Cleveland schools would be closed. It was not true, but many youngsters never heard the correction, and the attendance at Cleveland Public Schools was down about 50% today. But that was today. The official word for tomorrow is that Cleveland schools will be closed, as Jay Backus learned tonight from Dr. Paul Briggs. 
there are several sections of our town where snow is piling up rather heavily, and um, uh, it's going to be difficult for some teachers to get in. It's going to be difficult for some students to get in. We've had a lot of calls from parents that are very much concerned about the safety of their children, and so therefore we think that uh, perhaps uh, in better judgment to close down for tomorrow. So one more time, no school tomorrow for everyone in the Cleveland Public Schools. And in many other places, heavy winds and all that snow that's been falling in northern Ohio have persuaded many people to forget all about holding classes tomorrow morning. Here now is a complete list of the very latest school cancellations as well as the cancellations of Tuesday meetings. <laughs> been a lot quicker to put the ones on that were going to be open, I we think. We should have just said Northern Ohio will be closed tomorrow. Because Except for way. the following <laughs> seven things. By the way, spelling does not count, so do not call on account of a spelling. The question is, who gets rid of the snow on days and nights such as this? A special report on that is next as TV5 Eyewitness News continues. Something we all count on in weather such as this is the city's ability to keep the streets clear or at least keep an upper hand on things. The city depends on its snow equipment, and tonight Jay Backus looks at Cleveland's snow removal fleet. Jay? It's a test under battle conditions for the equipment, isn't it, Dave? And it's obvious that the crews don't have an upper hand on the snow all the time. But it's not always the city's fault. The people who run the city's heavy road equipment and who dispatch it will readily tell you that uh, only so much can be done in the midst of a storm like this. But I was assured by Streets Commissioner John LaRiccia today that the equipment is holding up under the strain, at least there is no worse breakdown rate than normal. Now, yesterday, when I talked to a city employee who regularly sends road crews out, I asked him if he felt the men, and especially the equipment, could cope with the advancing blizzard. We've been uh, pretty fortunate this year so far. Uh, our equipment is good, and we have uh, several new salt vehicles, and uh, we've been maintaining uh, equipment uh, very well so far. His boss, Commissioner John uh, Lurichia, tells me that the equipment is averaging a breakdown rate between 20 and 25 percent. He says that's about normal and that he can't complain. In fact, he says the city's crews and equipment seem to be weathering the storm pretty well, considering. Dave? Well, you know, Jay, one of the most important things uh, in this system besides the equipment is salt that's used to help melt away the snow. And all around the state, the severe winter weather has created a salt shortage that threatens to develop into a major problem. Stark County, that's a good example. They have salt now, but the dwindling supplies are causing officials to warn the law enforcement agencies that there will be slick roads at times because the salt piles, well, they're getting low. Guys and I am down on the shoreway. This is just ridiculous. This is Dave from Auto Tow Incorporated, yeah, that's right? That's correct. And you're doing a lot of business down here tonight. Uh, I don't want to do any business <laughs> down here tonight. You're going to be getting frozen up with the, the snow in your beard here if you stay out too much longer. It's right? working that way. I tell you. How many cars have you been towing out here tonight? This is the first one. Well, well there aren't too many around, but they're getting buried <laughs> under the snow, I know that. All you got to do is find them. This is not a good place to be tonight. Not tonight. No. This ain't a good night to be out at all. That's right. Stay off the shoreway. Stay in indoors tonight. Dave knows the reason why. You can just look at us and know the reason why. We'll check the weather for you in detail right after this.